Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today it's time for one of my very favorite series that I do on this channel. Let's take a look at three Pokemon cards that are so gosh darn good. They are never coming back. And we're going to start off with one that PJC Gaming 9548 described as the obvious one in relation to my previous video, Battle VIP Pass. And as always, if you guys have got some ideas for cards that you think are so good, they will never be printed again. Drop them down in the comment section, would you? Might use them in a previous video. And there are several ways a card gets onto this list. Sometimes I just look at it and go, yeah, that's too good. It's not coming back. Other times it is we get a new card that is released. And the new card seems to be Pokemon's way of saying, yeah, this is a nerf version of the old card. You're not having the old card back. But you know what? This is both of them. Because Battle VIP Pass was too good. Being able to get any two Pokemon turn one. And the thing is, I know everybody could play Battle VIP Pass. Any two basic straight to your bench. And I know it was, you know, nerfed in that you can only play it on your first turn. But the problem with Battle VIP Pass was, you could play four copies in your deck and your opponent could play four copies in their deck. But if they hit double Battle VIP Pass turn one and you didn't, especially in, say, a mirror match, that's it, it's over. Like, at that stage, your opponent has got such a bigger start. It doesn't mean they're definitely going to win, but it gives them such a ridiculous advantage. We would see people literally playing stuff like Irida. And the hope was that you would hit Irida, turn one going second, and then Irida would get you your battle VIP pass. It's not exactly the, the greatest plan ever, but it's literally what people were doing because they were in a little bit of trouble here. Just trying to get all of their Battle VIP pass reliably turn one. And that's kind of the problem. We had this situation where some people would hit it turn one and some people wouldn't. And that would sometimes literally be the deciding factor in the game, which people didn't really like. But also, aside from the it's too good, although to be clear, as I've tried to explain, it, it clearly is too good. We've just got Buddy Buddy Poffins that's been revealed. And Buddy Buddy Poffins seems to be a direct response to Battle VIP Pass. Now, I, I'm not one of the game designers. I'm not inside the heads. I can't tell you for certain. But Buddy Buddy Poffins is one of the, it's one of the cards that you look at and go, oh, Battle VIP Pass is rotating and it is rotating in like two months. This is one of the cards which is going to help to bridge the gap. Is it perfect? No. I don't think anyone's pretending it's perfect. But it is going to be like the best we've got, basically. And essentially what it does is it lets you go and search for two Pokemon with 70 HP or less that are basics and put them on your bench. Now the good news is it's not just a turn one thing. You can use it whenever, which is lovely. But the fact that it's 70 HP or less, that kind of tells you what you need to know. Battle VIP Pass was a bit too good. And this seems to be Pokemon's way of going, you know what? Nah, we're not doing that again, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move away from it. And let's go to a card which was last printed in Celestial Storm. And it's a card that has been printed many times before. Going all the way back to Team Rocket. It's Rainbow Energy. And Rainbow Energy is weird to me. Because for like the whole time that I was playing, for years and years and years, Rainbow Energy was just there. It was just a staple. Like everybody knew Rainbow Energy was a thing. It's been a while. Now, I need to caveat this one a little bit, okay? Because Rainbow Energy is one of those where... I could see it coming back. I just don't see it coming back anytime soon. Like the fact that it was printed over and over again for years and then all of a sudden just disappeared off the face of the earth and hasn't come back is weird to me. And Rainbow Energy is one of those cards right now that a lot of decks would love using. It's literally just attach it to a Pokemon. It's any energy, but you got to take a damage counter when you attach it. But it is just a universal, any Pokemon can have it, and it is any kind of energy. 
and is one of those things that looks kind of harmless, honestly, on the face of it. But it's been a while, and we just haven't had it back. And when they keep giving us stuff like this, they keep giving us stuff which is, well, frankly, not the same. Like, the biggest one here is Luminous Energy. Came out in Paldea Evolved. It's quite a recent energy. And it is just one of any energy. But it only works if there's no other special energy. If there's any other special energy attached to the same Pokemon, Luminous Energy all of a sudden becomes just a colorless energy. And Luminous Energy is actually, if you attach one, it's better than Rainbow Energy. Because Rainbow Energy, you have to take a damage counter when you attach it. Luminous Energy, you don't. There's no downside the first time you whack a Luminous Energy on there. The problem is Luminous Energy limits you to one. Well, that's a little bit of a problem for some decks. And this seems very, very deliberate. Because I'm telling you now, R Rainbow Energy was legal for many years in various different forms. And every time, somebody made a ridiculous deck with it. And it always revolved around having many different of them. Take Kling Clang as an example. Kling Clang is a weird deck, right? If you look at it, it doesn't look like a particularly good deck. And yet, it won US Nationals. Just let you move Metal Energy around. But the thing was, because we had Rainbow Energy at the time, Rainbow Energy counted as a Metal Energy when you wanted to use Shift Gear, but then it also counted as what other energy you wanted when you were attacking with something else. Which made it great. For what it's worth, when we got to Worlds a few weeks after US Nationals, everyone realised Kling Clang wasn't that good, people were taking against it. But just like that one US Nationals, it was great. But the whole point was it only really worked because you were playing four of them. And Luminous Energy takes that away. And we do have some others, but you'll notice they're all a similar kind of thing. Fusion Strike Energy can only be attached to a Fusion Strike Pokemon. And it's great, but it's only for Fusion Strike Pokemon. Spiral Energy. Great. Any kind of energy. Which is lovely. But it can only be attached to a Rapid Strike Pokemon. And then of course we can play the same game with Impact Energy. Which can only be attached to a Single Strike Pokemon. So we've had similar kind of cards since. But every single one is either you can only have one of these at a time. Or it's... You can only use it on this particular kind of Pokemon. Because there aren't that many single rapid Fusion Strike Pokemon. The card designers can basically keep much better control of this. Because they can go, hey, we're, we're thinking of doing this energy. What Fusion Strike Pokemon exist? And then once the energy's out there, if they're trying to make a new Fusion Strike Pokemon, they can go, well, hang on a second. How does it go around that energy? And then we end up with Rainbow Energy sitting out there. As what looked like a fairly inoffensive card. But we've had multiple cards. Since the last time this was printed. We have had multiple cards printed. Which basically tell us. It's not coming back. You can love it. You can want it. That's brilliant. You're not getting it back. It's not happening. So yeah. I don't think Rainbow Energy is coming back. You know what else I don't think is coming back? Max Potion. Which, incidentally, of all the cards I'm showing you in this series, this might be one of the ones people most want to come back. Max Potion, we had it a few times, and it finished off with Guardians Rising. And since then, we've not had Max Potion, and Guardians Rising was a while ago at this stage. Guardians Rising was one of the Sun and Moon sets, and it released in English, at least, in May 2017. Coming on for seven years ago. That was a while back at this stage. And since then, no sight nor sign of Max Potion. And what we do keep getting is cards that are not a million miles away. Cards that are pretty close. 
Cards that let you do a whole bunch of healing. But it's not quite the same now, is it? Uh, and the answer is no. No, it's not. I mean, take Bianca as an example. The new Bianca card, which is which we're getting in Temporal Forces. It heals all damage from one of your Pokemon that has 30 HP or less remaining. Now, Max Potion heals all damage from a Pokemon at the expense of the energy. And it was actually a card that made Kling Clang really good. Because Kling Clang, you could move all the energy off. Then Max Potion with no downside. Then move the energy back on. And it gave you a, a fairly ridiculous tank of whatever you might be using at the time. And that's kind of what Max Potion did. And this isn't just another cards that have been printed. But think about the cards that Pokemon tend to ban. Pokemon bans tend to come in because we've not had an opportunity to play the game. It's cards that stop you playing the game. That's what we generally tend to see. And this is one where in the right deck, you can just be healing over and over and over again. And your opponent just doesn't get to play the game. And that's a bad thing. Like, they gave us Quad Stone, which let you heal all damage from all of your Pokemon. Which was awesome if you could play all four Quad Stone at once. It never worked. No one actually did it. And, you know, we had Hyper Potion back in Champion's Path. They let you heal 120 at the cost of two energy, which was kind of a similar thing as Max Potion. But the difference was that we could basically control that a lot better. Like that one was very much a case of, well, you're only dealing 120 and you've got to discard two of the energy to do so. It's, it's kind of like Max Potion. But it's Max Potion Light. It's baby Max Potion. It is, you can heal a bunch at the expense of some energy, but it's not the same as just being able to heal up completely. And they're honestly, as item cards, they're the closest we've had to Max Potion since Max Potion went away. Now, when it comes to picking up Pokemon with a supporter card, we are absolutely fine with that. Uh, the new Professor Turo's lets you pick up a damaged Pokemon. But there's a huge difference here, because the difference is, if it's an evolution Pokemon, you've got to play it down and do all the whole evolving stuff. Well, that, that's not the same thing. That's a lot more work, a lot more effort. It's your supporter card for the turn, so you've got to muck around with that. So, it's not that I don't think we'll ever get Max Potion back per se, although that really is a conceit of this video. It's the fact that, since we last had it, Pokemon seem to have made absolutely no effort to give us anything even remotely close to it. And it fits the profile of the kind of card Pokemon don't like. Every time we have Max Potion, somebody gets some combo rolling with a Pokemon that's borderline impossible to KO. And if you look at the card bands that have been coming down, it's cards that frustrate your opponent and stop them playing the game. And you, you can be happy or sad about that. That's fine. But my point is, that is the kind of thing that this card does. And I think that means we're not getting it back. Right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There are my trio for today. Max Potion, Battle VIP Pass, and Rainbow Energy. Battle VIP Pass is the only one of those on the face of it that just looks absolutely broken and not coming back. But hopefully I've explained well enough that these other two, Pokemon seem to be telling us they don't want to bring it back. But if you've got better ideas for cards that aren't coming back, let me know in the comment section. Got us! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join the Discord, all kinds of fun things. And get shout outs on the channel like the lovely Evan Parker, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now and seems to be a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.